Da Jia Hao, Wa Shu Adam Brown, Bao Chen, Wa Bu Tai Hui Shou A Zhong Wen, Dan Che, Wa Hui Ji Shu Sui Si. This video is going to look at Chinese social media and cultural identity because I think it's really important to acknowledge the usual Western perspective on the online world. What I thought I'd do here is give you a bit of an outline of the different kinds of Chinese social media while I show you some footage of a recent trip to China. Firstly, you've got Weibo, which is essentially a Chinese version of Twitter. It's a microblogging platform that individuals and organizations can make an account for and post out information, there's a character limit and so on. There's also ways in which celebrities can be verified, which is similar to the blue tick that you see on Twitter. Another really important platform to be aware of is Youku, which is a video sharing platform that's very similar to YouTube. I don't tend to engage with Youku all that much given that the content there is not all that accessible to people who don't speak Chinese. However, when I have looked at Youku, it's really interesting that before some videos you watch, you have to sit through a series of seven or eight advertisements before the video will start. Of course, you can pay more money to skip those advertisements, but it's interesting to imagine what kind of reaction the users of YouTube would have if the same kind of scenario was playing out there. But the main app that I wanted to focus on here is WeChat, by far the most popular social media app in China. WeChat is something that I use regularly myself, given that my partner is Chinese, and it's the only way that I can communicate with her family back in China. Given that it takes the place of apps like WhatsApp and Facebook, which are not generally able to be used in China, there are heaps of features and functions that WeChat has. It includes instant messaging in text or audio or video form. It facilitates group chats in all of these forms as well. You can post moments that people connected to you can see and comment on, just like Facebook posts. There's also another nifty feature of WeChat that's simply called Shake. And when you select this feature, you basically shake your phone, and at that same instant, someone somewhere else in the world has shaken their phone as well. And you're randomly connected to this person. And you can send them an instant message and invite them to connect with you. I don't know how many people use this. It's a bit of a gimmick, but an interesting one. And coming back to the key topic of this video, that being cultural identity, I'm obviously not the best person to speak to this subject. So when we were out driving the other day, I asked my partner to speak about one really interesting aspect of WeChat, which is the red packet. The red packet feature of WeChat is inspired by the cultural tradition in China of giving red envelopes. And if you haven't heard of that either, I asked Chen to explain. So Chen, can you explain a little bit about the cultural tradition in China around the giving of red envelopes? Red envelope contains certain kind of money that we give out for our families or um, friends in some special event or some Chinese festival, such as Chinese New Year. Birthdays and weddings and all that kind uh, of stuff? Oh, yeah. 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 So how often do red envelopes get given out throughout the year? It's a really common sort of thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it depends on like how many invitation, wedding invitation you, you get. <laughs> and also a uh, kind of like birthday gift to give um, the young baby. Also, uh, we give the red envelope to our parents, to the grandparents during Chinese New Year some special Chinese festival. Right. And WeChat, being an immensely popular social media app, now has this red packet feature where the giving of red envelopes is now sort of transferred into the virtual world. Can you talk a little bit about how that works? Sure. Mm, so in WeChat, we can insert certain amount of Chinese yen into this red um, packet. It's connected to your bank account, isn't it? Yes. So I usually, um, during Chinese New Year, I will send uh, the red packet through WeChat to our family group chat. So um, all the f uh, family members in the group chat can see once I send it. So people usually will rush to get it and 
see who get the get it really fast or see who get the best luck to get the most highest amount through the red envelope. And that's pretty much like a game, isn't it? Almost. I mean, it's not the it's not a huge amount of money that's usually transferred, but people do check WeChat quite often. But when they get a notification, especially for the red envelope, you know, it's it's sort of a game who can get there fastest and and who gets what. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those red package will be uh, sent through different group chats. Not only my family group chat use it, uh, my uh, friends group chat, my classmate group chat always have heaps of envelope being sent through some special festival in Chinese China. Yeah, it, it is nice to interact with the family and friends um, through WeChat during those special events. Definitely. And I guess that's part of this issue that I'm looking at of cultural identity. The fact that you can be in Melbourne, in Australia, all the way over the other side of the world, but still participating in this really uniquely cultural tradition via a social media app must feel really good. Yeah, definitely. Through those kind of um, special Chinese festival, which I feel like, yeah, pretty close to them yeah, during this time. If you want to know more about the different features and functions of WeChat, from the extensive use of WeChat payment through to the personal and professional uses of WeChat by different people, I recently released a podcast on this theme. And as I said before, downloading the app for a quick look can be really useful. With its increasing influence around the world, being familiar with this very powerful and very interesting example of Chinese social media could be very handy in future. CSN Ni for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe to this channel to get updates about future videos. You can also find more media from me on my blog Digital Zones, my Facebook page Digital Zones, on Twitter I'm Digital Zones, on Instagram I'm Digital Zones, and on Snapchat I'm Song Yo Bin Han Hao.